Hello. Is that okay? Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining this session. Uh, this session shows that uh, the kernel boot time tracing feature in the uh, recent Linux kernel. So <clears throat> let me start. Um, I'm Masam Hiramats. I'm uh, working for Renaro um, and the Renaro members as tech lead for Social Next Landing Team. Also, I'm a maintainer of the K-probes and related tracing features <clears throat> um, and the tools. For example, path probe and F-trace and the uh, dynamic events. Okay. So, okay, uh, here is today's agenda. Um, <clears throat> the uh, agenda, uh, yeah, according to the agenda, I will start from uh, background and uh, um, the extra boot configuration and uh, boot time tracing. So, uh, why want to? Uh, why we want to the kind of boot time tracing? The reason is to debug and analyze the boot time errors and the performance issues. For example, measuring uh, performance statistics to shorten the uh, boot time or analyze uh, driver initialization failures or uh, debugging boot time process or continuous tracing uh, from boot time to, uh, to user space. <clears throat> so, uh, what we can do now? <clears throat> Currently, we already have uh, some kernel uh, command line options for tracing. For example, setting up options, uh, output to print K and uh, enable events and tracers, filtering and K probes events, etc. So you can see uh, these options in our uh, kernel parameters uh, .txt file. So here is the example of the kernel command line parameters. Uh, like in the grab config uh, file, so you can pass the many parameters like this in one line. So, um, but uh, what there, there are uh, some limitations. Uh, one is the uh, size limitation. The kernel command line size is small. The minimum size is uh, uh, 256 bytes. Uh, but uh, usually uh, we expand this uh, to the uh, 4 kilobyte. <coughs> um, but uh, who wants to read the, or write the 4 kilobyte uh, line, uh, length, sign, uh, length single line options? And also, um, it supports only our partial features. FPS has many features like per event filters and actions, uh, instances, histograms, but uh, those are too complicated to write into the single line. So we need uh, uh, more <coughs> flexible options. So one is the solution. The easiest one is uh, expanding that uh, kernel command line, but it's not easy to write down the complex uh, tracing options on single line. Then, uh, how about expanding the device tree? Uh, it's well documented and structured data. I actually tried this, but this was knocked uh, because it's only for the hardware description. <clears throat> so, um, finally, I introduced a new boot time structured data. This is extra boot configuration. And okay, <clears throat> so what is the extra boot configuration? The extra boot configuration is a new kernel command line extension. We call it uh, boot time, uh, call it boot config for short. <clears throat> boot config is a plain ASCII text of tree structured key value list like this. And 
sorry. This supports up to 32 kilobytes or <clears throat> 512 nodes. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, so uh, this supports up to 32 kilobytes or uh, 512 nodes. The nodes mean that the number of the keywords and values. So here's um, uh, the extra boot configuration syntax. It's a simple key value set. The key consists of the uh, single or multiple words, and the key may harbor uh, values or array of values. The values are uh, treated as a string, so you can use double or single quotes. Uh, we also have some uh, assignments. Equal uh, defines the value of the key, and common equal overwrite the, the uh, previous definition. And also, uh, plus equal appends a value as an array element. And here uh, is the uh, important features of, uh, feature of the uh, extra boot configuration. We can use a structured key. Uh, this means that the same keywords can be merged with brace. So uh, for example, uh, key word, key dot word one equal value one and key dot word two equal value two can be written as a key brace and uh, word one equal value one, word two equal value two, and the close brace. So that's a, um, uh, and also this tree structure can be nested. So uh, this allows us to write uh, complex nested key values in a simple form. So uh, how is the uh, extra boot configuration uh, passes to, uh, passed to the uh, kernel at boot time, the extra boot configuration file will be loaded with the uh, internal the image. The boot config uh, command, uh, command, yeah, there is a boot config command, and this command appends our uh, configuration, uh, configuration file to the internal the image at this. So uh, you just need to uh, boot the kernel with this uh, init out the image and pass a uh, boot config uh, kernel command line. Then the boot config is enabled on the kernel. So uh, here is uh, yeah uh, how to use the uh, boot config command. The uh, this commands operate that uh, uh, boot config or inter the um, or interim FS image. The boot config uh, hyphen A option uh, uh, applies the um, given our config file to init out the image. And the boot config uh, minus D option will remove the config uh, from init out the And the uh, L option uh, will show that uh, what config is currently applied. And in addition, uh, if you uh, just pass a configuration file uh, to the boot config command, uh, it parses the, the file and format it in the key value list. Um, <clears throat> also, uh, boot config uh, supports the, the procfs interface. So when you boot up the kernel with boot config and it's enabled, uh, you can see what boot uh, boot config is applied uh, via proc boot config, like a proc uh, command line, uh, like this. And this is our key value list uh, because it's uh, easier to be handled by your shell script. And, okay. Um, so our and uh, also our. Can, uh, the extra boot configuration allows you to expand the kernel command line. The configuration uh, which start with the kernel or, or uh, user uh, passed as a part of the kernel command line. So for example, <coughs> if you apply this boot config, 
these options will be shown uh, in the kernel command line, uh, like the below uh, list. Okay. Um, uh, the extra boot compilation uh, also provides kernel APIs. So these are functions start with the uh, uh, XBC uh, for the kernel in uh, functions. Uh, this means that, uh, because that are uh, after boot up the kernel, uh, these APIs are gone uh, to reduce the memory footprint. Um, there is a, a main data structure uh, which names the XBC node which is a, a tree node uh, that represents a, a keyword and value. So uh, there are many uh, <coughs> APIs, but are, uh, yeah, here is the uh, main APIs I picked uh, just for, like a XBC find value uh, will find the value from a keyword, or uh, XBC find node will uh, find a, a node which uh, will be a, a keyword node or value node uh, from key, keywords. And also uh, we have uh, some uh, iterator macros. So here is an um, example of the uh, boot config kernel API usage. Uh, like uh, you can find that the uh, value node uh, by using that uh, XCBC find value. And uh, also, uh, you can check that uh, the result and uh, keyword has, uh, there is a keyword, but a, a non value key. Or uh, if you have a uh, get a, a V node returned, uh, this keyword has values. Uh, but uh, um, yeah, you can, you need to uh, check that is an array so that uh, you can use that array iterator for that. Okay, uh, so uh, next is our boot time tracing. So by introduce the uh, boot config, so we can introduce, uh, implement the uh, boot time tracing on it. Uh, here is an uh, uh, boot time tracing options in a boot config. Boot time tracing options uh, start from uh, F trace or kernel. Uh, the, F, the kernel keyword uh, is for uh, global f trace settings. And also, uh, this supports the per event and per instance settings like this. We also are support the k probes and synthetic events. Uh, you can see that uh, there are details in this uh, oh, uh, boot time uh, configuration, uh, boot time trace. Uh, RST uh, text file. So uh, here is some more uh, boot time tracing parameters we will uh, check. Um, uh, like a global parameter, for example, that a global parameters, kernel dot tp print kl will, uh, it's a frag of which output that are uh, trace event data to the console. The par instance parameters. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, for our par instance parameters, uh, we can use that our uh, f trace uh, dot instance and uh, instance name and buffer size. For example, buffer size will uh, set up the, the buffer size for this instance. You can skip that uh, this instance that instance name. Uh, then uh, uh, we, this uh, will uh, change the uh, uh, setup that the, the parameters in the uh, global uh, f uh, instance, the default instance. And also we uh, support that the par event parameters. Uh, so that's our f uh, instance and uh, uh, event uh, group name, that uh, event name. And enable, for example, enable uh, parameter will uh, enable uh, the, uh, the event in this instance, for example. 
And uh, uh, also, uh, we have our instance, uh, sorry, uh, event group name, event uh, dot actions, which can allow us to set up the trigger actions. We are, and uh, if you set uh, pass the uh, k probes as a group name, you can uh, control that uh, or define that a new k probes events with a probes uh, parameter, and uh, uh, also uh, we can. Uh, if you uh, set the uh, synthetic uh, as a group name, this will um, uh, yeah, define the uh, synthetic events with a uh, specified field. So uh, here is one uh, example of the good time tracing. Uh, this one uh, will uh, set up the, the, the global f trace instance with uh, these uh, parameters, uh, options, uh, set up the options, um, uh, buffer size, and uh, uh, also other uh, K-probes events. Uh, K-probes, uh, for example, VFS sheet um, events in uh, uh, probes uh, with uh, this probe definition, like a kernel read function, uh, argument one and argument two. And uh, we also set up that the filters, which mean that the common PID, if the the below uh, 200, it will uh, enable, uh, or say the the event, or say trace that event. And also uh, we have our kernel um, <coughs> global parameters we can set. <coughs> Here is another uh, example uh, for synthetic events. The F trace events uh, yeah, dot event uh, and the synthetic event. This one uh, will uh, define uh, a new synthetic event uh, for init call and uh, uh, set up the some uh, histogram actions on it. So uh, this actually uh, will make our histogram of the init call callbacks uh, execution time. So each uh, how how long it will take for each uh, callbacks. Okay, uh, another interesting example is here. Uh, this shows that uh, how to make a partial uh, function call graph in a specific function. On the uh, function, uh, so that uh, will we'll, uh, make our uh, user uh, function graph tracer, but uh, tracing at, uh, by default tracing is off, so disabled. But uh, on the uh, specific function entries, entrance, we put the uh, k probes event, and uh, uh, at that point we uh, enable the uh, trace. And uh, also the uh, function exit, uh, we put the uh, return probe on it and uh, uh, trace, uh, uh, disable trace again. So that's uh, uh, in this, uh, 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 between uh, uh, these uh, events, um, the function graph will be uh, enabled. So we can get the uh, partial uh, function call graph. <coughs> Uh, by the way, uh, with these uh, configurations are still a bit complicated. Yeah, uh, because that's our uh, address is very uh, big. Uh, so uh, you may uh, need some help to write it down uh, or test it. So uh, here we have our two, uh, two help us shell script for good time tracing. These are under the tools boot config scripts. The one is our f trace to vconf dot uh, sh. Uh, this converts uh, f trace uh, current settings to a boot config file. And this is good for uh, making a prototype boot config by setting f trace uh, interactively. Uh, another is our, uh, one. Another one is our vconf uh, to f trace. Uh, this converts a uh, given boot config file to shell, shell command to set up the uh, F trace. Of course, uh, if you use the apply uh, option, uh, which will try to apply the generated command too, so that uh, you can uh, check that uh, 
it can pass the, uh, the error check or something like that. And this is uh, good for checking your boot config uh, before reboot. <coughs> so uh, how we can uh, start using the, the boot time tracing? The, at first, you have to enable that the, uh, the config boot time config, uh, 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 sorry, uh, config boot config and uh, boot, uh, boot time tracing uh, both uh, enabled and build uh, the kernel and install it. And I also uh, build the uh, tools boot config boot config. And I uh, uh, set up the uh, sys kernel tracing. So that uh, that uh, FTRS setting up as you like. And I run uh, the, this tool FTRS to be conf.sh to generate the boot config file. And yeah, maybe you will uh, edit it. And I apply the, the config file to the init the image as follows. And uh, uh, boot kernel with uh, boot config on the kernel command line. Then uh, you will uh, get the uh, use that uh, the boot time tracing. Uh, so finally, I'd like to explain that uh, when to start the, the boot time tracing. Until uh, uh, Linux 5.9, the boot time tracing uh, starts from the end of FS init call. So only device init call or later uh, can be traced. Yeah, uh, but uh, this one uh, is a bit na too narrow. So uh, yeah, uh, to expand, uh, increase the uh, traceable code, uh, I decided to uh, move uh, the kernel uh, k probes and uh, also the, the boot time tracing uh, initialization uh, routines in a uh, more area stage. So um, the finally, um, in our, uh, from the uh, 5.10 kernel, uh, we can start the boot time tracing from the end of core init call. So that are uh, almost all drivers and uh, or device frameworks and file systems uh, can be traced now. Okay, uh, so uh, we have uh, some time. So uh, let me um, show that uh, how the demonstration. Okay, can you see the, uh, my screen? Okay, we have some uh, uh, <coughs> the uh, uh, boot config file. So those are the examples. So um, applying uh, boot config, oh, boot config uh, file uh, to the, this uh, boot time tracing uh, to init RAMFS. And uh, sorry, then yeah, um, this will uh, use the QMU to boot up the tur. Um, <coughs> We do it up. Okay, then you can see that the, the VFS read uh, event now or uh, output to the print k buffer. Yeah, and uh, also um, okay. Uh, debug tracing. Uh, cat, uh, buffer size kibite. Okay, we can see that the buffer size is set to one megabyte.
Then uh, also we can uh, um, use that uh, root time uh, two b conf. Uh, this one is uh, the number two one, so that are the making a histogram. So let me uh, try uh, root config a root uh, time two b conf to init all the uh, interim fs and uh, run it again. Okay, um, so we'll just check that uh, the, it was uh, uh, passed correctly. Uh, root config. Yeah, uh, this one is uh, set it, uh, let's say, uh, passed correctly. So, uh, the sys kernel data tracing. And uh, uh, the histogram is in, should be in a, um, Synthetic events, so that are synthetic, uh, synthetic events, it call histogram. Yeah, so you can see that the, uh, the, the latencies, uh, yeah, uh, it's shown in this uh, histogram. Yeah. So you can, uh, uh, as you can see, that uh, you can check, change the, uh, the options. Just with the uh, with using the, the the boot config command <clears throat> and run it. For example, this one is the third one, so that uh, the making a partial uh, <clears throat> function call graph. Yeah, this kernel debug tracing, and uh, we'll see the uh, trace buffer. Okay, it just started. Uh, the uh, function graph call graph is made, but uh, it just started from uh, PCI proc in it. And uh, this one is so CT1. And okay, uh, the in the at last, yeah. Uh, actually, this one <laughs> stopped by your KLET probe, so that uh, you may see that uh, the trampling handler or KLET probes. Uh, yeah, pros, uh, call graph, but uh, this one actually finish at the, the uh, PCI proc in it. The end of the PCI proc in. Okay. That's uh, the demonstration. Okay, go back to the uh, slide. So uh, here's today's summary. So uh, to, so today I explained that uh, the extra boot compilation uh, is introduced, uh, let's say, uh, introduced in a uh, recent kernel, and uh, uh, this one, uh, yeah, I showed that the uh, complex and the many boot options are supported, and uh, also uh, it does not need any uh, upgrade. Update the bootloaders uh, because it loaded with uh, init LD. and also uh, it um, it, say, uh, provide uh, kernel APIs, yeah, and uh, some commands. And uh, also I uh, explained that the boot time tracing uh, supported on our uh, boot time configuration, uh, boot configuration. So it and uh, uh, explained that uh, uh, the uh, uh, by event uh, options, by instance options, it, uh, and the uh, histograms, etc. And uh, uh, also, uh, it showed that the uh, helper shell script upstream kernel uh, supports the uh, area init call tracing. Okay, uh, here is the current status. Yeah, we almost done our, uh, this work. So uh, uh, you can use that or uh, uh, after to uh, yeah uh, the boot uh, sorry boot config and uh, also a boot time tracing on the the recent uh, recent uh, upstream kernel uh, maybe your uh, start boot time uh, earlier um, tracing um, 
uh, early time uh, boot time tracing will be uh, supported in uh, uh, 5.10 next release. So uh, here's a future work. Uh, we, yeah, I will, um, yeah, enhance the uh, histogram syntax and uh, uh, also uh, uh, some boot time uh, boot time support on the bootloaders if possible. So uh, that's all for today's session. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me on the chat or Q and A. Okay, I yeah I got the uh, several uh, yeah two questions. Yeah, one is uh, in example number three. Does it capture all the nested function called in the PCI init function? Yes. So that's our, uh, as I uh, showed in our, uh, the demonstration, uh, this one uh, actually that's our, uh, yeah, all, uh, captures the, all the nested function from the PCI init function. So that's our, uh, you can make our, uh, the function call graph on this part. And, uh, oh, um, yeah, and also, uh, is that uh, boot config API usage for other kind of code like drivers? Yes, um, yeah, as far as the, uh, the drivers using the, the init functions, yeah, it could be uh, possible. But uh, note that the, uh, the boot config uh, APIs will be uh, freed after boot so that are uh, those are drivers has to use uh, uh, say has to uh, embed it in the kernel at this moment maybe we can uh, remove that are the uh, these uh, limitations if the dri some drivers uh, want to use that uh, uh, the, the boot config apis directory at this moment actually that are uh, my use case the boot time tracing it's only for boot time, so that uh, I uh, decided to uh, make it just for uh, init, um, what's it, init functions. Uh, thank you, Doryu. And uh, is it possible to demo? Yeah, I uh, just demonstrated uh, the, uh, yeah. Um, Oh, this one. And okay. Let me show that. Uh, oh, sorry. Let me show it again in our uh, boot time configuration. Uh, the uh, sorry, boot time tracing number three. So that are the this one needs the boot time tracing. Uh, Number three is here, so that's our, it will make a, a partial uh, core graph tracing and just upright and boot up. And you can see that our, um, it will take a, a bit longer time because uh, the uh, function core graph tracing is still running uh, in background. So. This, anyway, uh, this kernel um, tracing, uh, sorry, uh, debug tracing, yeah, trace. We show that there are uh, only the partial um, the functions for graph. Yeah, actually, that are the mixed with uh, the uh, other uh, CPUs. So that uh, in that case, we start that uh, the CPU zero. So uh, you can uh, try um, pass CPU CPU zero trace. Uh, then uh, you can um, yeah uh, get the the trace data uh, on uh, only on the uh, CPU zero. Yeah, it shows that there are all the nested uh, function call graph. 
in the end. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, okay. Come back again. Okay. So uh, that's all from my side. Uh, so we're. Uh, <clears throat> Thank you for uh, thank you very much uh, for your time to join our, uh, this session. Um, if you have any further uh, questions, please uh, email me or uh, quit, uh, ask me on the Slack. And uh, <coughs> yeah, enjoy the rest of your conference. Thank you very much. Yep.